leave it all over you. That is I. Yes, I had a near-death experience um, probably about three or four weeks ago. Here we are in August of 2020. Now, this near-death experience was not one of those where I was hospitalized. I wasn't hooked up to any medical device to keep me alive. Um, it was simply something that happened here. Uh, it may be a little weak to some of you, but it, for me, my little personal experience, uh, I definitely have a premise to this uh, story, this incident that happened in my life. And of course, I will drive a point home, the moral to the story at the end. Um, last month in July of 2020, Christine, <clears throat> excuse me, took a journey uh, to visit her mother and her stepfather and her father up in the Washington State area in Idaho. So she drove to be safe during the COVID-19. I remained home for three weeks, that's a long time, just myself and Beatrix, our loving little cat. Now, at my age, I do have uh, trouble at times of remaining in a deep sleep throughout the night. Other people in their 60s or 70s have the same issues. Some nights it's hard to sleep. So what I've been doing occasionally, some nights, is I take this stuff here that's kind of a generic brand of NyQuil. Uh, my late, my former sister-in-law, my late brother's wife, who's an RN, registered nurse, told me years ago, David, just as you, as you age, you will need a little assistance. Just take some NyQuil. <clears throat> so about three, four weeks ago, I had one of those nights, make a long story short. So I took my little dose of NyQuil. Now, rather than drinking it properly, now understand there's the trachea and the esophagus, right? The trachea is the wind tube for the respiratory system. The uh, uh, esophagus is the food tube down to the 25 to 30 feet of digestive system all the way down to the colon. I will not get into anatomy with you. So I took this for some strange reason with a deep breath and went into the wrong tube. I basically inhaled chemicals that have been designed for digestion in the stomach, through the stomach walls into the bloodstream for the medicine to have effect on the body. I breathed it in. I felt it go through my nasal passages. I coughed it out my nose. I know, it's kind of gross. I felt some of it go down into my lungs through the trachea. Now, this chemical, this medicine was not designed for this. Now, for the next two hours, I went through what I call a pretty traumatic experience. And I want to explain to you how we always hear as unbelievers that there are no atheists in foxholes. At your moment of death, when you have a very, very close to death experience, traumatic experience, you will call out to God there, Mr. Atheist. Now, I told you my stories uh, on the previous shows years ago of my two 30 -something, mid 30 something year old children when they were both in college 15, 12, 13, 14, 15 years ago. They both had a serious car accident and I don't have time to go over those. I was called on the telephone. They were both, it was a serious car accident. Not a good thing for a parent to hear on the phone. And I explained what went through my mind at that. Now, let me tie it into this experience. The chemicals in the trachea, in my body, cause some kind of reaction, a negative reaction. The breathing tube began to swell up. I'm not a medical professional. I didn't even Google this to find out what it was. I'm making an assumption. It began to close up. I was having difficulty breathing for the next two hours. I attempted to cough, to clear it out. The breathing cleared up momentarily, they closed back up. It was a little scary at times. I got this close to call 911. Here's my point. 
At that moment, within those two hours, not once, and if you don't believe me, that's okay, but you can put me on a lie detector test. Not once did I consider ever calling out to something above, a higher power above. Not once did the thought occur to me at this moment of possible death and departure from this world into nothingness. Not once did that thought occur to me that there might be a heaven or hell. That maybe I should reconsider Pascal's wager, which never made any sense to me. Flip of the coin, wager. Just in case there's a God, you might want to trust him and call out to him. That thought never occurred to me, nor did it occur to me 12 to 15 years ago when both of my children were in college and they had their serious car accidents. Never occurred to me. Now, there is a thing called a God-free life. The question I have for my fellow secular people are you God free? In a moment, a hard moment, a testing moment, maybe a scary moment, do you consider, do you think about what you were once taught? This pervasive teaching that we've heard for years that there's a heaven and hell, there's a soul and the spirit outside the mind. Is there any evidence for that? No. If you are at that point as an unbeliever and you still consider that and you still are driven by fear, then I would say you're not God free. And that's okay. We all go through a journey. Now I'm telling you from my personal experience, at that moment, when I was gasping for air, I guess that one to two hour span, I had a thought, what would it be like if I died now? Now, to be honest with you, I didn't really have a fear. I do not fear death. I, I've never had a quite a good understanding why some people and the majority of humanity are unable to comprehend nothingness. What happens when you die? You go back into nothingness. Just like you are when you go into a deep sleep without dreaming, or if you do not remember your dreams, you're in that state of semi-consciousness. Just like before you were born, it was nothing. At that moment of my near-death experience, I thought this might be it. I was having a hard time breathing. So what went through my mind? First thing I thought about was my wife. She would come home in a couple weeks and see my rotting corpse in the bedroom. I thought about our cat, Beatrix. She has enough water to survive for a couple weeks in her big bowl, but she would probably starve to death or she would be driven by knee deprivation that results in behavior to meet the next need. She would probably start consuming my rotting flesh, maybe, I'm not sure. I went to a very peacefulness in my mind. Now I have studied and read some of this, that the human mind, the human brain has coping mechanisms to deal with these very stressful situations. I actually had a peace and a calm because I'm not afraid of death. I thought to myself, if this is it, I'm ready to go. I've lived a good life. I'm happy. I like to think I've helped other people. I like to think I've loved others, my kids, my grandkids. Now, more thoughts that went through my mind were my children, of course, my wife. I thought of my two 30-something-year-old children, their families, 
My grandchildren? Of course. My point is, when you are at a state of supernatural free state, God free state, it can be a wonderful life. No longer driven by the fear of what you've been told for years and years. My question is, are you God free? Are you plagued by fear of the unknown, the fear of death? That's why primitive hominids, homo sapiens, Neanderthals and the others, hunter-gatherers, conceive these ideas of God to deal with the fear of the unknown, the fear of the afterlife, the fear of death. What happens? I'm God-free. I'm not perfect. I continue to grow as a human being, to change and be open-minded. That was an extraordinary experience I went through. A very peaceful experience at that. It did clear up a couple hours later. There was no bright light. There was no voice calling me home or <laughs> into punishment. All the scriptures I used to preach about when you die without Christ, you will be separated from God into eternal darkness and damnation where the worm never dies and the fire is not quenched. Not once did it even cross my mind. It's a good place to be, folks. I can only hope that humanity will get to a place where they let these outdated supernatural beliefs go and enter the realm of reality. All right, thanks for listening to my near-death experience. I hope it has helped some of you. And if you're at that stage... No guilt. Just remember, keep reading, keep learning, keep opening up your mind. And those of you that still have fear, get some help. There are plenty of great secular counselors out there that will help you get through this fear. Remember to let the light of secular humanism shine. Have a wonderful day. What are we doing, man? What are we doing? No, 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 you're done.